Last week, I fell down a funny little rabbit hole while browsing the conservative subreddit and I thought it would make for a nice exercise in lateral reading. So I'm going to walk you guys through the same path I took the first time I read this headline, and then we'll work backwards to build a more accurate understanding of what happened. As always, links to any references used can be found in the description below this video. So the headline reads, Antifa tries to protest an anti-pedophilia event, get attacked, police have to intervene. Okay, a lot going on there. Let's see what kind of context the article provides. Ireland doesn't play, police had to rescue them. That's all the extra information the author could be bothered to give us. So we have a loaded headline, a single useless comment from the author, and an embedded tweet with a video. The full video is two minutes long, but I'm going to show you just the most relevant 10 seconds. Just prior to this, you can hear the speaker talking about children coping with abuse, so the anti-pedophile description seems to be accurate. But that just leaves me wondering why Ireland needed to have a rally to reaffirm their stance of being anti-pedophilia. Nor does it explain how such a rally could attract the attention of Antifa activists. Before we click through to the tweet, I just want to take a quick look at what kind of site this is. So the type of post we just looked at really is the norm for this website. Every post consists of a headline, a witty one-liner as the author's only contribution, and some sort of embedded media. If you're lucky, the post might even include a snippet of an article from an actual news website. And looking at the timestamps, it seems the three or four people working here post on average once or twice an hour, starting from 9 in the morning and going late into the evening. So that's the kind of website we found ourselves on. A minimal effort daily feed of easily digestible headlines aimed at conservatives. Does that mean we can conclude that Antifa is not actually pro-pedophilia? No, of course not. I mean, we can conclude that for other reasons, but not because of the trashiness of this website. The only conclusion we can draw here is that we'll have to go look elsewhere to figure out what led to such a headline. Clicking through to the tweet itself, we can see that the video actually comes from another source called The Burkean. The Burkean describes itself as a political and cultural publication in Ireland that promotes free speech and fresh ideas. And the pinned tweet reads, There is no institutional bias against young conservatives, there is an outright conspiracy against them. So I get the impression the article I'm about to read comes from a conservative news site. Scrolling down, we can see the Burkean has put out a follow-up article about the event titled March for Innocence Retrospective. Finally, we have a name for the event, so we can follow up with other sources later. Keeping the heavy bias in mind, I'm going to click through to the article and see what other information we can glean from it. Most of the article is lauding the Irish Conservatives for a successful rally and for ushering in a new era for the Irish right, but I do want to focus on a few specific excerpts. Describing a speech given by John Connors at the rally, the author writes, He praised those who turned up to protest against the Minister for Children, Roderick O'Gorman, so that one sentence changes the perspective quite a bit. This was not a general rally against pedophilia as we had been told originally. It was a specific protest against the appointment of this Roderick O'Gorman fella as the new Minister for Children in Ireland, another name to follow up on later. The second important piece of information in this article is the mention of National Party leader Justin Barrett being one of the featured speakers. In fact, he was apparently the person speaking when Antifa began their counter-protest. So this article has given us a hint of what this is all about. Irish conservatives, including the National Party, want Roderick O'Gorman to resign his post as Minister for Children because he is somehow associated with pedophilia. And if Ireland's National Party is anything like the other national parties I've read about... Yeah, well, I would say this has nothing to do with the Irish people. These flags are, um, represent globalism, they represent pro-abortion, they represent mass migration, they represent basically the destruction of Irish society as we know it. And uh, we're not happy about this um, in the National Party. Then that alone could explain the Antifa presence. Before we move on, there's one more section I want to highlight in this article where the author grapples with the nature of the rally-goers' response to the counter-protesters. This has nothing to do with our lateral reading exercise. I just found it amusing to see a free speech publication having to deal with a real-world example of the paradox of free speech absolutism. Before I look into Roderick O'Gorman, I want to take a quick detour to see how the protest was being promoted. I searched Google for Ireland and March for Innocence and set my results to show only pages published before July 10 to avoid any stories written after the protest took place. And the only advertisement I found was this image which reads, We the people of Ireland will gather to demand the immediate removal from government of those complicit in child abuse, cover-ups, and pedophilia activism. Even though the headline on this page mentions Roderick O'Gorman, the promotional piece itself does not. 
that struck me as being a little underhanded. Protesting a specific person while hiding behind something as unassailable as being anti-pedophilia. Back to the Burkean, our next step is to figure out what the accusations against Roderick O'Gorman are. Lucky for us, the Burkean has a whole separate article about it, so we'll start with that and fact check the claims as we go. They also have an article titled The Erasure of Western History, so this publication might be even further right than I originally thought. The first four paragraphs are all fluff, so I'm going to begin with paragraph 5. Roderick O'Gorman stood with Tatchell at a pride parade because he admired the work Tatchell had done. However, Minister O'Gorman claimed that he did not know about Tatchell's alleged apologism of pedophilia. The Tatchell mentioned here is Peter Tatchell, an LGBT plus activist and member of the left-wing Green Party in the UK. We'll get into the specifics about Peter Tatchell and his pedophilia apologism later on in this article. The next piece of evidence. O'Gorman's own party currently sits in the European Parliament alongside members of Germany's Green Party who have themselves been rocked by scandals. Scandals revealing their somewhat old but quite open and extensive connections to pedophilia advocacy. Okay, just to visually illustrate what this author is claiming as evidence of O'Gorman's link to pedophilia. O'Gorman belongs to the Green Party in Ireland. Ireland's Green Party sends representatives, of which O'Gorman is not one, to the European Parliament. Germany also has a Green Party that sends members to the European Parliament. Germany's Green Party has had scandals involving pedophilia advocacy. That's four degrees of separation. Germany's Green Party might have their own problems, but this author has failed to draw any convincing link between that and Ireland's Roderick O'Gorman. The paragraph ends with this additional bit shoehorned in. O'Gorman also inherits his ministerial seat from a woman who partook in questionable Wiccan sects, and that is the only mention of that woman in this entire article. The author doesn't even expand on what was so questionable about her Wicca stuff, so I was left to figure it out for myself. The previous Children's Minister of Ireland was Catherine Zappone, and searching for Catherine Zappone Wicca gives this article from The Sun filled with quotes from the former minister and a book she wrote about feminine spirituality. Is it kinda weird? Yeah, but nothing in here mentions pedophilia. I also searched specifically for connections between Catherine Zappone and pedophilia, but couldn't find anything. So I think the only point against her really is that she's a lefty witch and the Catholic right doesn't like it. And since the author didn't provide any specifics, I'm left with the impression that Catherine Zappone has nothing to do with either pedophilia or Roderick O'Gorman. At least the author kind of acknowledges how flimsy these links are. To be sure, many of these examples are connections that are at one remove from O'Gorman himself, yet when he proceeds to retweet and post images of a performance artist emulating Saturn consuming his children as though Goya's great painting was a funny and novel thing and not a serious picture of existential evil, it raises reasonable suspicions. If those suspicions are in any way related to pedophilia, then I'm gonna say no they are not reasonable. The author seems to have forgotten to include the tweet in question, so I had to go track it down myself. This is the tweet. Do you see the connection? Because I don't. And the Twitter responses were no help either. As far as I can tell, the objection is that this painting is somehow associated with Satanism. Another piece of non-evidence linking O'Gorman to pedophilia. I specifically wanted to get the story from a conservative news source because I figured those who want O'Gorman to resign would provide the strongest evidence against him. But so far the case has been almost laughable. The author has one last chance though as we return to Peter Tatchell in his questionable remarks about the age of consent. The main piece of evidence against Tatchell, and the one that shows up in every article I read, involves a quote from a letter he sent to the Guardian in 1997. As this author describes it, Tatchell insists that he calls pedophilia impossible to condone, yet in the same sentence in that 1997 letter to the Guardian, he writes, It is time society acknowledged the truth that not all sex involving children is unwanted, abusive, and harmful. Well that doesn't sound great. I did some digging and found a scan of the original newspaper this letter appeared in, along with all the context surrounding it, including the book review that Tatchell was responding to, and the ensuing back and forth between Tatchell and concerned readers and it's really not any better with context. Tatchell's current work revolves around advocating for LGBT plus rights globally, as well as pushing for proper and mandatory sex education in UK schools with a focus on understanding, avoiding, and reporting sexual abuse, all of which are good causes, but that 1997 letter really doesn't sit well with me. So the crux of the issue comes down to this. How closely linked are Peter Tatchell and Roderick O'Gorman? Has Tatchell made any more problematic statements? And how reasonable is it to assume that O'Gorman knew of Tatchell's letter before it resurfaced this month? 
I read 9 articles from 8 different Irish news sites, and none of them could cite any additional relationship beyond the photo of O'Gorman and Tatchell attending the 2018 Dublin Pride Parade, and no further problematic comments from Tatchell beyond his 1997 letter to the Guardian. One article did bring up a second piece of evidence, where O'Gorman tweeted a picture of a map, and someone tried to relate it to the acronym MAP, which stands for Minor Attracted Person, you know, like a pedophile. But the author of this article shuts it down as absurd nonsense. In fact, this article has the best take on the situation of all the ones I read. The author, John McGurk, plainly lays out the facts, includes full quotes alongside their source material, and then asks three important questions to put the whole controversy in perspective. It's funny because this same site also had a second author who wrote a second article with one of the worst takes on the situation. To answer John's second question, if you search Peter Tatchell's name and limit the results to before June 2020, none of the top results mention his 1997 letter or anything else linking him to pedophilia apologism. If you set the timescale to before 2019, which is what O'Gorman would have seen had he googled Peter Tatchell before taking a picture with him, the results are similarly clean. The only interesting one was this article from someone who had become disillusioned with Tatchell. The author does mention a letter submitted to The Guardian, but it's not the 1997 one. This one was about free speech, and Tatchell was only one of several signatories. Nothing in here mentions Tatchell being a potential pedophilia apologist. So it seems entirely plausible that O'Gorman really did only know of Tatchell as a gay rights activist and only ever met him during that one pride parade. And with that, I'm ready to make my report. In June of 2020, Roderick O'Gorman, a left-wing politician, was appointed to be Ireland's Minister of Children. Shortly after the appointment, Irish conservatives began recirculating a picture from 2018 of O'Gorman standing next to Peter Tatchell at Dublin Pride. Also to resurface was a 1997 letter that Tatchell had submitted to The Guardian in which Tatchell claimed that intergenerational relationships involving minors are not always abusive. The picture, combined with Tatchell's letter, were used to claim that Roderick O'Gorman is a pedophilia apologist. Conservatives, including the leader of a far-right political party, decided to hold a protest on July 11 to advocate for the removal of all pedophile apologists from the government. Although the promotional image did not mention Roderick O'Gorman, and articles both before and after framed the event as an anti-pedophilia rally, the event was really a direct protest against O'Gorman. Given all that, the decision of these few Antifa activists to stage a counter-protest was most likely aimed at the far-right political party that had involved itself in the rally. But that's not to say that the counter-protesters made a good decision regardless of the far-right presence. The conservatives were in full control of the narrative and any opposition was obviously going to be labeled pedophilia apologists. There was no reason to expect a result other than what we got. A Redditor with no understanding of the situation sharing a headline from right-wing BuzzFeed declaring Antifa is now pro-pedophilia. 